Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going through a bunch of data comparing ultimately internal resistance and performance that we get out of a battery pack. In this video, I want to prove to you that the internal resistance measurements that we get from our battery chargers have quite a big role in allowing us to understand the type of performance that we can get out of a radio controlled battery. I have three graphs to show you. I have a graph that compares the internal resistance against the wattage that you get on average from battery. I have another graph that compares IR against the amount of power, milliamp hours, down to a specific voltage that you get. And then I also have a third graph that shows you internal resistance IR versus the amount of voltage that you have after 10 seconds of discharge. One of the first things I wanna do here is thank the RC Explained community patrons for your support making these types of videos possible. We've now been doing this for over a year and we've collected data on multiple different battery packs. Upwards of over 18 batteries have now been tested. In this particular video, I'm gonna show somewhere just over or around the 10 mark in terms of batteries. So let's get that first image up here on the screen and I wanna talk first about the relationship because ultimately what we're trying to do here is show the relationship between internal resistance and these performance metrics. Here's the first image here showing the internal resistance on the X axis, and then we have the wattage there on the Y axis. And because we want to relate these both together, what I've done is I've drawn a line of best fit, or at least the software has drawn that line of best fit. And then the number that you see there known as R squared, that tells us how tight all the data points are to that line of best fit. The higher the number, the better off our data set is. A perfect value would be 1.0. So anything over about 0.9 is going to be a very strong relationship. Anywhere around that 0.7 to 0.9 is going to be a strong relationship between the X and Y axis parameters. So now let's take a look at the data that we're looking at in this one. A lot of the times when we've done battery reviews and we've looked at performance and compared batteries, one of the biggest metrics that I really like to compare is the average wattage that that battery cell can deplete over the course of its charge, over the course of the entire discharge of that pack. In a past video, I've shown this type of data and I didn't include the battery manufacturer. So now what I've done is just tag that battery manufacturer so that you guys can also get a comparison of battery packs. And we'll kind of group them in three different tiers. We got top tier, we got mid tier, and then we got the bottom tier. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So the relationship that we have when we look at internal resistance that we're measuring with our radio controlled battery charger, which most of us have these at home, is actually quite strong. The R squared value comes in at just barely under 0.96. This is showing that this relationship between these two factors are extremely strong. There's a very strong relationship between the internal resistance and the wattage that we get out of a lithium polymer battery pack. And our graph can show that, and you can see all the points here on our graph are very tight. Now let's take a look at the top tier that we're dealing with here. When we look at the top tier, we're looking in this general area and we got a few different battery packs there. And the top couple battery packs that you see, battery packs that are closest to the top of this graph are going to be better. We're not going to be looking towards left and right here. So as we approach the top of the graph, that's what we're expecting. So the top value that we see there is the SMC who has the best performance. And we've just compared that up against the Azure battery pack and both of those battery packs are leading the top data set that we tested so far on the channel in terms of performance overall. There's a few battery packs that are just trailing behind that absolute top tier and that is your on the borderline of mid to top tier. Three battery packs, they come out to be a Liperior battery pack as well as the Panther series from the Turnigy lineup and CNHL, the G Plus battery model lineup. So those are coming in just on the borderline between that top tier and that mid tier. Now moving down towards that mid tier, we also have the standard Turnigy Graphene and 
and as well the HRB followed by the Traxxas there. And the HRB looks like it performs the best compared to those because it is higher up on the graph. We're not looking left or right points. And then when we look at closer to the bottom tier of this, this is the batteries that perform the weakest. And you can see the one that has performed the weakest overall in this specific test is the Z battery. And then we have also with it is the Yumi and the Turnigy Rapid. Here's the next graph that I've put together. And in this one, we're comparing again on the X axis internal resistance. And on the Y axis, we're looking at the milliamp hour, the capacity that we have discharged out of the battery pack during our 100 plus amp load test and we're seeing how much we can get out until it comes down to 3.50 volts per cell. So we can see that there's another strong relationship. Why? Because our R squared value is sitting at 0.8186, suggesting to us that the relationship between IR and the milliamp hour that we're drawing out of the pack to 3.50 volts is quite strong. Now what we see is a lot of the similarities from this graph to the last graph in terms of where the manufacturers are placing here. There's some variations where one company did a little bit stronger than they did before and others did a little bit weaker. But for the most part, if we go through it, starting in our top tier there, we have SMC at the top, we got Azure following them, and then we got the CNHL G Plus that comes shortly behind it there. Again, we're looking at what comes to the closest to the top portion of this graph, not looking left and right. Left and right is our internal resistance. That is not the actual performance that we get out of the pack, but it is the predictor of the performance. And if you want to look at the predictor of performance, then we can look at left and right. And you can see that the SMC is the most towards the left, followed by the Azure, followed by the CNHL. And these are aligning. And then we look at the next one there, we got the Panther series from Turnigy, as well as Liperia, which very closely follow what we saw. And sneaking just just above those last two that we talked about is Traxxas. I didn't mention Traxxas in the last graph, but you did see it. You saw where it was somewhere there in the mid tier. So this is one where it slipped up a little bit, which is good to see from that battery manufacturer. And then we look at that mid tier. We got the HRB, we got Turnigy, the standard graphene, and we got the firework battery pack that's coming in our mid tier this time around. And on the very bottom tier, we got Turnigy Rapid, which just barely outperforms the Yumi battery pack, as well as the Z, which tends to come in last place for just about everything. Here is the last graph that I have to show you. This is one where we compare again on internal resistance on the X axis, but now on the Y axis, we have the voltage of the battery pack after 10 seconds being under load. And of course that load at this point is gonna be very close to the maximum that we see in terms of current being drawn from the battery pack because it's probably gonna be above 105 amps having the most amount of voltage throughout the entire discharge curve of this run. When we look at the X versus the Y axes, we're trying to compare that and we have a line of best fit. You can see the points are really mimicking that line and following it from bottom right all the way up to the top left. And our R squared value again is showing us a strong relationship between the voltage value that we get at that 10 second mark and the internal resistance that our battery charger is measuring. And why I really love using the battery charger for measuring the internal resistance is because everyone at home uses battery chargers to get our lithium polymer battery packs up to 100% charge to go run our radio control vehicle. And if you get one that has this extra feature, then you yourself will be able to experiment and take a look at how your battery performs over its lifespan, as well as be able to compare it up against other battery packs that you own. So now let's take a look at our graph and start now opposite direction, looking at the bottom right, which is our lowest performing batteries in this specific category. So in this category, we're looking at the Yumi, the Rapid battery, as well as Z coming in last place, our tier three there. And from the perspective, we are looking at the ones that perform best when we have a voltage that is higher. So again, higher on the graph, closer to the top is going to be the better performing batteries. And then when we look at that mid tier, you could see that the HRB, you got the Turnigy Graphene. This is the common 45C pack, as well as the Firework are there. And then you also have the Liperior, which is very close to the Traxxas pack in that mid tier. And then when we look and get closer to our top tier, we have the Graphene Panther. This is from Turnigy, as well as the, can't see it, have to move my head over here. It is the CNHL G Plus 
S pack, followed by the Azure, and then right at the very top of the graph, again, we have the SMC. Now that we've shown this information, we not only know which batteries are performing very well and which are performing not so well, we can determine the performance that we get just out of our battery charger results. If you have that IR measurement and you're following the relationships there, you will be able to determine that the lower internal resistance that your battery pack has, the better the performance that you're going to get out of it. Guys, this is what I really love about getting the numbers here. This is the data that we've collected. This is not an opinion of anyone. We simply get internal resistance measurements. We look at it from that theoretical point of view, and then we actually do the performance test by loading it at 100 plus amps. Our test is really called the nominal 105 amp load test. We load it at that current for the entire duration of the battery pack. We terminate it if the battery gets too hot. We let it run all the way to voltage cutoff if it doesn't overheat and many batteries do overheat, but those that make it past to the end perform the best. And this is how we have the idea of performance. We do each one of these tests individually, as you've probably seen on the channel. If you haven't, highly recommend subscribing so that you don't miss those. We do them once per month, and then I take all of the data and I throw it on to my RC Explained Patreon community so that those that are part of the battery tier there will be able to download a copy of all the data sets that we have for each one of these battery packs that we test. I got more batteries that are gonna come and get tested here this year. I'm looking to get Spectrum in there. I really wanna get Gen Zays tested. This comes up a number of times by all of you guys, and it just seems to be very difficult right now to get into Canada and to find stock of who even has these packs. Trying to get through those elements, I'm, I'm gonna get a pack at some point. And that's really it, guys. I hope this answers the question of internal resistance and not being so important. It's just a number that appears on my charger. I don't think you should be comparing it. Well, I think we should be comparing it because it is directly related to the performance that we get out of our battery. That does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys. See you in that next one.